The Super Eagles of Nigeria went to Cameroon. They saw, but they could not conquer. K Sera Sera, whatever will be, will be. And Nigeria's 97th game at the African Cup of Nations ended in this absolute end. Nigeria are out of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations. And guess what? They lost to Tunisia, a team that is ravaged by COVID-19. And right now, a lot of Nigerians are not in a joyful mood. Some are asking, what happened? Even to this time, some are asking, what happened? And some are saying, what is next for this team? And that's what we'll be telling you on this show. On that note, I welcome you to this, another edition of Nigeria Super Fans Forum. My name is Olua Femi Achalu, and Kai Dogundare is not smiling at all. He's right here with me in the studio. Kai Day. Well, well, let me smile for you and for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you like the, just for the camera? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's been a very, very tough time for, for Nigerian football. Briefly, we thought there was this way of hope. Hmm. And then judging by what we saw, but hey, it is what it is. That's football. Hmm. Time goes on. It is what it is, and that is football. Like I said, we'll be looking at what is next for this present crop of Super Eagles players. They are good, by the way. Very, very good set of players, but something just went wrong. Sometimes it happens in football, just like how they said. It is what it is. Before we get down to discussion, to look at the game and what will be happening going forward, let's quickly go on this. Very, very, very we'll be back. Please stay right there. Yeah, welcome back. It's still Nigeria Super Fans Forum and Kyle Dogunda is still very much in the studio. Kyle Day, uh, before that game, you wrote on Facebook that uh, you're looking forward to this team to go a go down, a man down. And I want to act like many Nigerians will usually ask, which shot should they go? Because <laughs> it's like you, you perfectly saw what was going to happen in that game. Of course, nobody, virtually nobody saw what happened. So which shot should they go? Uh, 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 yeah, actually, to be fair, it's not about which church I did go. Okay, which prayer mountain? You know? <laughs> it's just about, uh, I think it's instinct, what I felt. You know, everybody kept asking me after the first game, what are your impressions? I said, no, I want to see this team over and over again. Mm. I, so eventually, at the end of the third game, at the end of the group stage, stages. I now print down what I thought were my observations from mm. the from the, group from the games, matches. From three games. Mm -hmm. Because you should be able to and I like it over three games. And that, that's what I saw. And I said, you know what? I've seen this game, this team play three times in this competition. While I am proud of what they've done so far, but yet I have not seen them under pressure. I think this team will see its character when it goes a man down and a goal mm -hmm. down. Let's see how they come back from that adversity. Then if they're able to do that, that will show that we really have a team on our hands. Hmm. Unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. We couldn't come back from that. From that it happened just as you predicted. Maybe, maybe uh, you're a prophet that uh, you, uh, yeah, and you do it. not even know. <laughs> okay, l l let's look at the game. We, we, we had an early scare, you know, uh, we finally declared a goal, a, a goal line. I had a, he made a goal line clearance. And Maduka Okoye, there's been a lot of questions around him right now. It seems that uh, since um, Vincent Nyama retired from the Super Eagles, we've not been able to get a very good replacement. Kali Keme came close to what, what was going to be like another Vincent Nyama, but since we're still struggling in that department, we tried a, a Vincent Uzo at the 2018 African uh, World Cup, rather. We tried um, Daniel Akbe at the 2019 African Cup of Nations. Now, Okoye, a lot of people are blaming him for Nigeria's exit. Um, uh, like as much as I agree that he had a lot to do with that goal because he lacked positional awareness. Mm -hmm. You follow the ball, not the legs. He didn't do that. But I'll cut him some slack. Okoye is still a very, very young young boy. Uh, he has a long way to go in his career. And goalkeepers, the the the, the older they get, the better they become. Mm. So he has shown flashes of brilliance, and I think that's what I want Nigerians to take with us as we go as we go forward. Uh, with him. I don't want us to throw him away uh, in a moment of anger. Mm. I see him doing great things. Uh, what's his name? The Vincent Yama that you mentioned was lucky he understood it and he yeah, Rumo. Rumo. So he kept Rumo under underkept go when Rufai, Agonavari, Agonavari, oh, Agonavari, Agonavari, Agonavari. Yeah. So who are the mentors of this younger uh, player, goalkeepers? Mm. None that you can easily point to. Who is still active. So it will take time, but I'm very, very sure that 
we are going to get the best of Okoye in the years ahead. But let, let's look at the game again. Ne uh, the Tunisians, it, it was obvious in that game that they've watched our tapes over the same Everybody games. watched us. Oh, yeah. We are the most watched team at the <laughs> They knew that our wing play was our most dangerous weapon, Moses yeah. Simon particularly, and Samuel Chukwueze. And they shackled our players. And they knew that we had no other plan other than that. You know, they knew that we are not going to play through the middle. It was just going to be through the wing. So, in your own opinion, what else could Iguavon have done? In order to 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 surprise the the North Africans. Okay, let me let me start by saying everybody who has had a thing or two to do with Nigerian football knows that over the years our greatest moments has been when we played through the, the wings. wings. Mm. In 1980, we had very great wingers in Sheikh Mohamed Bami and Adoki. Yeah, in 1994, we had Emmanuel Amunike, Amunike and George Finney. In 1996, we had Amunike Ekpeba on this flank. We have uh, Etijani Babangira on the other flanks. So we have always been blessed. Even in 2013, we had very good uh, wingers that could play the game. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that has always been the hallmark of Nigerian football. At the point we ditched that uh, style of play, which has hurt us so far. Then, luckily for us, Eguavon came around, resurrected this swing play, and it worked brilliantly for us. You understand? And if I were the Tunisian coach, I would do what he did on, on uh, uh, the other day. That's what I would have done. This is the strength of the team. As long as you get these two, these two wingers out of the game, and that's why each time Moses was on the ball or Chukwueze was on the ball, there were always two, at least two players on them, mm -hmm. so that they were being double marked. So before you dribble one, dribble the second one, the they are putting the ball off you, and there will always be a third person locking behind, always trying to see that you don't get past them. That's what happened. If I were a Gravan, like you said, having seen that this thing was not working, there were two choices left for a Gravan to have done. Is either you, you decide on either of two things. You look at uh, Moses, uh, the, the left wing, where Moses was operating from, mm -hmm. and the right wing, where Chukwese was operating for. You now decide to kill one wing, literally now. I'm not saying you should shoot one wing. <laughs> you decide to just bring in Mo Moses, because he's the better dribbler. Yeah. You just make him drift into the middle. Hmm. You are just, that's what you just tell him. Don't try going on the flank. One, just uh, try to. As a change of tactics, yeah, now. yeah. It is a change of, not really change of tactics. It's a change of personnel. Just moving, just moving into the middle, mm. and you allow uh, Saidu Senusi to move a, a bit upward so that you can cover the, the space in between. That's what we lack this day. One thing you should, you, I don't know whether you noticed on the day was that there were acres of space in our in our middle mid area. Why did we suddenly have that uh, acres of food? Because those who should have done that mean were shackled in their in their wings. They were not mm. allowed to move. So if you bring in the Moses, you just drift him into the middle because he's a, he's a good dribbler. The least he will get will be will be will be fouls. Yeah. The Tunisians will foul him and will, will get penalties or even free kicks from any of those areas. That's the first option. The second option was to go route one straight down the middle. You just look for a player, and that's where I thought he would have brought him. A Kaleshi and Wakali. Hmm. Yeah, I know you say I'm prejudiced about that. No, 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 like no, 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 no. I like him because of his skill set, what he brings to the team. Two things that like Kaleshi and Wakali would have done for us. You know how many corner kicks he has? He has a vision. So he, has, he has vision. He's a very good corner kick specialist. Yeah. Apart from that, he is very, very good. I think he's the best in the business with long passes. The, the, the last time I saw anybody with a better uh, range in long pass was Olise. Yeah. Olise. Yeah. Say this boy has shown that he, he could be as good as Olise when it comes to dropping all those 40, mm -hmm. 50 yard passes. And he could just, because we had like three, four offensive players in the field, on the pitch, he could just be the, the key that we were looking for. But unfortunately, uh, I haven't thought otherwise. He is the coach. He's mm -hmm. always getting paid. Mm -hmm. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just so he, his opinion will matter. <laughs> he brought in an Iwobi, and to be fair, I don't have anything against Iwobi. But I, I remember saying, I put up an update that I'm not sure, I'm not convinced Iwobi is who we need at this point. Particularly, Iwobi has not even come to party as far as this tournament is concerned. Yeah, because we possible. saw against Guinea Bissau. It's and possible, but sometimes a player just needs a match to just kick off his, his tournament. So that was why I wasn't too too biased against him. But I felt he wasn't the player we needed at that time. With a man down, you needed the player who could do two things: who could mark and who could push the team forward. Mm. Ikelechi and Wakali would have fitted that bill 
much more perfectly. We didn't bring him home. We brought an, uh, a Wobi. He got a card for the team. Mm. You understand? So we're, I'm we're not going to, to, we're I, look I'm at that. Yeah, yeah. He got a card for the team and it was off after five minutes. That was disaster. A mm. man down a goal down. Where do you go? That's what happened. Mm. Okay. Let's quickly go on this very short break. When we return, we'll look at that uh, Alex Wobi incident. Was it a red card? There's been a lot of debate as regarding that because initially the referee gave him a yellow card before he was called to watch the replay and he cancelled the yellow card and upgraded it to a red card. But we'll be back to look at that incident. Was it a red card? Did the referee even do justice in that game? We'll be back. Please stay with us. Yeah, welcome back. It's still Nigeria Super Fans. So now we'll be looking at the Super Eagles exit. The untimely exit, I would say, uh, from the 20th Rural Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon. Uh, we'll be looking at that Alex Iwobi incident. We'll be spent just five minutes on the pitch when he came on uh, to uh, he came on to replace Kel uh, Kelechi Yanacho, and just after just five minutes, he was already sent off. Kyle, let's look at that incident. Was it a red card? You know, rules change these days, and it creates a lot of confusion. We all know that. Yeah, it will be lost possession just momentarily. And while trying to re recover the ball, he stepped on, he stamped on someone's foot. Was it a record for you? Yes, it was. A straight one. Because, you see, the referee gave him a yellow card because of the, of, the, of the point where the referee saw the action from. That was why he thought, ah, this is bad. It's a yellow card of him. But when it was called, I thought it was a straight record because what he will be, will be did, like you said, was he lost, it, he lost control of the mm -hmm. ball. And he, he saw by his peripheral vision that somebody was coming to get the ball. So he panicked. Mm -hmm. In order to stop the other guy from getting the ball, his leg was moved over the ball completely. He wasn't touching the ball. He moved over the ball and stepped on the other guy's ankle. Mm -hmm. He stepped on the ankle. So that for me was a record. When the referee saw it, he gave a yellow card, which in his opinion, was a yellow card of things. But when he was called back and he saw how bad it was actually on replay, he had to change his mind. But sorry to cut in. Yeah. Uh, was, it, was, was it that painful or was it the, the usual overreaction or the overboard uh, display by the North Africans? You, knew, you, you know how the North Africans yeah, are actually that, that It looked bad, actually. It looked bad. I saw, first time, I don't know, I, I, I saw Wobi's leg. I saw Wobi's leg over the ball. He completely left the ball and stamped on the guy's ankle. That is a red card in anybody's book. We shouldn't be debating this, Femi. It is fine. We know we cannot reverse what has happened, but let's be honest with ourselves. That was a red card. I would be, I would, I would be furious if that had happened to our players and the referee decided to just give a yellow card. So it, it, to be fair, now be fair, fair, yeah, yeah. To be fair, it was a red card. And like I said, there were instances, there were moments when we could have done better. I don't want to, to boil down everything, uh, the defeat to just, it will be sending off as bad as it was. Hmm. After it will be sending off, we were still good to go. Yeah. We, did, we weren't overly being dominated by the Tunisians, despite being a man down. We still had our chances to score. Yeah. So I don't want people to crucify it will be simply because of the red card. It took it for the team. Let's be honest with ourselves. It was, a, it was a red card for Nigeria. <laughs> Only that he just he did us yeah, the honor yeah. of collecting it on our behalf. Okay, let's look at Augustin Gavoy now. Mm. People have said, uh, even Augustin Okocha said uh, the Tunisians have smarted Nigeria. But let's look yeah. at it now. Did he display tactical ineptitude? Because, um, like we said earlier, everyone would know that Victor Moses was our key yeah, man going Simon forward. Moses. Simon Moses, rather, was our key man. In your opinion, do you think Gavin displayed tactical ineptitude in, in such that he, he should have approved the game, particularly after first time? Because the first time we saw the game plan that the Tunisians had during the break, would you have expected him to make another approach into the game? You know, you know, there's a phrase in American football. They call it Monday morning quarterbacking. When you have an opinion after the event, mm -hmm. the, with the benefit of insight and everything, we can sit here and pontificate. Ah, this is what he should have done. This is what he, he should have done. But in the heat of the moment, probably there were some decisions he should have taken that he did not take. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, and most, uh, the, the most important one was not seeing through the Tunisians, expecting that you are going to do the same thing over and over again and get a different result. He showed in the first half that this, the, the Tunisians 
came with a game plan and their game plan was to frustrate our own game plan. Mm -hmm. Whatever we threw at them, they were ready to just frustrate yeah. it. But I saw, I just felt that the Tunisians were thin in the middle. We could have exploited that. That's where I think it could have done better. Mm. But as a coach. As a coach, it could have done better as a coach. But you know one thing about coaches, and this has happened a whole lot of times. You see it even in European football. You see when people talk about uh, uh, about Pep Guardiola that he doesn't have a plan B. When they talk about uh, the La Masia philosophy in, in Barcelona that they don't have a plan B. Mm. All they have is possession of football. Tiki -taka. Possession, tiki -taka. Even when you are beating them 20-0, they will still be doing mm -hmm. their Tiki Taka. So they are, it, it, it happens to great coach, a great which is a government is not an exception. Fine, it should have been it should have been elastic enough to change things when they were not working. Mm. I'll give that. But see some of these things don't work according to plan. You might think uh, if we keep at this we we'll, we're going to get a result. Since it worked for us in the three previous games, we're going to get a, 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 a goal. So I'm not going to like I said crucify him. I think I'm in a very, very forgiving mood now. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. I think I'm going to forgive him. I'm not going to criticize. Yeah, I, I, I think he, he did a fantastic job. He yeah. had under so, a very short period of time. Yeah, tell me what Egwafon has shown us is the the the, the potential. We, we are just seeing like five percent of where this team can mm -hmm. actually be. So for me, that is something to be proud of, and that's something I want to say. Thank you to Egwafon for that. He has really shown us that this team is not as bad as we thought because we saw them under the. The, the last coach, we saw how terrible we were. Previous administration, like you always like, say. You know, you know, <laughs> and I was really wary. I, I don't know if you were going to take that. But under the last dispensation, we saw yeah. how they were. They were a very terrible team. This yeah. same team, without any additional subtraction, has shown us that the, the, the capacity and ability of this team, where we can go, the potential inherent in, in this team. And that, I think, is something we should not lose sight of when we are de deciding uh, okay, before I go to the next question, some people said raw play, ugly football, he qualified Nigeria for tournaments, he got results, including a third place in the 2019 AFCON. Yes. Now, Gavon came, played sexy football, and we crashed out in the round of 16. Yes. Maybe, I, I can't remember, this is the first time Nigeria be crashing out at this stage in, in, in AFCON, you know, since the team was, we now have 24 teams yes. rather than the usual 16 teams. Mm, what do you think? Actually. Yeah. So in Ghana, right? Yeah, in Ghana. So what do you think? Raw came, played ugly football, got results, at least a medal in the last half court. But Ugavon came, played sexy football, as they say, he crashed out. Round of 16. See, I always try to do something. No two teams. No two, no two teams are the same. Because the set, the set of circumstances that confront each is different. Mm. The players, the, the teams that Ugavon played in 2022, we're not the play the same teams, the same teams that Rock played in mm. 2019. So I don't want to see in trying to make that comparison, we're going to lose sight of very, very uh, important developments that we've seen over the past. But it's even shocking. Sorry, it's even shocking that till now we still have some people who are sympathetic towards Geno Troy in Nigeria. Yeah, see, there's something. It's it's shocking. No, it is called agenda. You see, it is called agenda. Everybody has an agenda. You have a reason why you do whatever it is you are doing. For whatever reasons it is, uh, I, f I felt letting Rob go. I, I, I happen to be one of his biggest supporters. That is not undoubted. Those who know me will tell you that they are even surprised that. In the uh, early days? Yeah, up to 2018. Because I saw the trajectory, I saw how the team was growing. Then after the World Cup, the team started dropping, mm -hmm. in both in performance and in comportment and everything, the team was dropping and discipline was going to the dogs. So it showed in the performance on the pitch. Before, I was close to the team, very, very close. I could consider myself an insider in the team. I saw a lot of things that sometimes you don't have to say in public. Mm. I saw how that team was like, an, uh, like, a, like, a, like a camp, like a military camp. Everything worked to precision. Mm. Yeah, at the point, everybody went just when they were on, they were doing whatever they wanted. He lost control. He had to do. That was just it. Let's just forget. And I think by now, whoever, no matter how sympathetic to Raw you are, you, you are, you know that Raw is not coming back. <laughs> That's the truth. Not, even if you need another coach tomorrow, it will not be Raw. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's quickly go on another break. We'll be back to talk about the fate of Augustine Guavari. Remember, after that game, 
he said he'll be returning to his office as the technical director of the Nigerian Football Federation. Meanwhile, there is a Jose Pacero locking in the corner. And in just over two months, Nigeria will be playing the playoff for the 2022 Qatar World Cup against our archivist Ghana. So what should the NFF do? We'll be looking at that when we return. Please stay with us. Yeah, welcome back. It's still Nigeria Super Fans Forum. And of course, if you're just you know, coming on board now, you've missed a whole lot of parts. So you can just go back and watch what we've uh, discussed as far as the Super Eagles crashing out of the AFCON is concerned. Kaode has done justice uh, to <laughs> that team. Kaode, let's come back to Augustine Guaboy now. What should the NFF do? Of course, he has stepped down as the coach of the team. And he said he has mandated the team to try and qualify Nigeria for the 2022 Akata World Cup. We have a, a, a crucial tie against uh, Ghana coming up. We saw the Tunisians. It looks like they, they already had a bad tournament. But we saw where they came uh, to Nigeria at, with. Now, Ghana also, they crashed out of the group stages. They will be, they already a wounded lion just at the Super Eagles. But now, uh, Joseph Pacero is at the corner to take charge. Would you advise the NFF to bring in Pacero now in just over two weeks to these crucial uh, games? or allow government to just manage the um, See, uh, for those who always advocate for a Nigerian and indigenous coach, I think they have a, they, they have a big reason to thank a government. Because a government has shown that it is only a Nigerian who has Nigerian uh, uh, football philosophy in his DNA that could have taken over that team in, in a social Such a time, time and do what he was mm -hmm. able to do. Fine, people could look at the end result and say we lost to Tunisia, we crashed out, but there are, there are other areas to be thankful for. So I would think we have less than two months now to mm -hmm. those crucial two legs, two, 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 two fish or so many yeah. ways. So I would want, even if he's going to be, to be relieved of the job eventually, I would want the NFL to allow him oversee those two legs over home and away against Ghana. Then you can bring him whoever you're, you're going to bring in. Because in any coach that you are bringing in now, forget whatever they've seen from afar about the sea, they will not really understand. It will take a long time for the, whoever is coming in to get used. And by the time you get used to it, the, the, two, the, the playoff is over. And who knows, we might be out of the World Cup. Apart from that, even the players will return to the clubs. The, the so what time would you have as a coach to even have them, them to play with them? You cannot work with them until the, the week of the, of the playoff. For me, it's, it doesn't make any, any, any logical sense to do that. So, but I would prefer that you, you allow a government to do this. See the team through the playoffs, then you can now tell him to go back to the office and bring in whoever you're bringing in. But bringing in a coach now, for me, doesn't make any, any, any sense at all. Let a government finish this job. If you're going to sack him, right, if you're going to relieve him or ask him to go back to the office, not sack anyway. <laughs> you can do that, but let him finish this. He has started well. Fine, these qualifiers. There are a whole lot of things that we're still going to talk about in the day in the days yeah, ahead. Yeah. Where he also made mistakes, we're going to talk about it because he allowed the distraction of giving the job on the permanent, do this, do that, to get into his head. I was going to ask. You actually he, took that out of my yes, mouth. He did. Hmm. He did that, I must say. But see, that is not enough to say he shouldn't see this team. Through the, two, through the playoffs. Okay, uh, let's look at the as, as we try to draw the curtain on the show now. Like you, like you said, do you think that got to him, the paparazzi? Yeah, it did. It did. I would say that. Even the players? Yeah, no, the coach in, 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 in particular. In particular. He got to him because no Eguavon, if you know him closely, is this kind of person that keeps to himself like he's, he looks studious, looks serious. Mm. But then, very few people will not get affected by that kind of distraction. He allowed it to get to his head. There were things in the media that I felt could have been better handled, but that is not enough, I keep saying, to keep him off the job. Mm. Let him finish this. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so NFL, that is a message for you. Let's have not finished what is started already. Of course, the Super Eagles of Nigeria will be waiting for the decision of the Nigerian Football Federation as regards what will, be going, what will happen going forward. Remember that that tie against uh, Ghana will be coming up in just over two months now. We'll be playing in Ghana before coming to uh, Nigeria. Nigeria 
have to be at the World Cup. We just have to be at the World Cup since we didn't do well in the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations. I remember Ghana, of course, they crashed out of the, at the group stage and they will also want have to be in Qatar. So you remember, some of the players will be flying perhaps directly uh, back to their club rather than coming uh, back to Nigeria from Garoua. So we'll be waiting for the decision of the NFF. As always, Kai Dugundari, thanks for coming through on the show. Sure, and next time, please, when you want to prophesy, please, <laughs> Let it always be <laughs> on the favor of Nigeria, especially as we prepare to play the, the playoffs games amen, now. Amen, amen. <laughs> okay, for you out there, thanks so much for being with us uh, all through the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations coverage. Of course, we've given you uh, at least, at least uh, 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 some uh, content as far as that tournament is concerned. Nigeria, they've crashed out now, but of course, by the side, you can still continue to monitor uh, the Super Eagles. Like how they said, in the coming days, we'll be giving you the build up to that. Um, uh, that World Cup playoff because it's going to be very, very huge. This is World Cup, not AFCON. So it is going to be very, very huge, especially for the career of this sports. Until we come your way again, I remain Oliver Femmeashal. And for everyone who has been part of the production, you say you've done a human job. Thank you very much. Bye for now.